So here we go again now. Oh, hell, hang on a minute. Here we go then, guys. The start of the GT7 League is about to get underway. And it's lights out, and away we go for 29 laps of the Nürburgring. Tiger Assassin's off to a good start on the inside of Bon Evil as they make their way down in towards Turn 1. Tops the Lumen Large in the background as all 12 drivers breaking for Turn 1. Someone's on the grass, it's a black car. I'm not too sure who's in the black car. I think it's Nathaniel. We'll uh, double check in a minute to see if anyone else has got away uncleanly. But Bon Evil back down the inside of Tiger through Turn 2. And we've got Cameron Kaboom looming large on the inside of Tops to this fin on the inside of Toussaint in the background behind there. Two by two making their way through the first sector but it is Bonnie Evil who leads in the Genesis followed by Tiger Assassin in second place and Cameron Kaboom with a good start in the Porsche has got up into third place looking in the background Costa on the inside of two Saints who's dropped down into seventh place the Mustang gets ahead of the Mercedes but two Saints going to send one back down the inside into the following right hander goes alongside the Swiss driver as they make their way down into the hairpin I believe it is called the Dunlop the hairpin or something like that uh, but Costa breaking late on the outside. Toussaint keeping his Mercedes tight on the inside. Piero trying to follow the Brit through but couldn't quite make anything of it. And Toussaint gets his way back up into sixth place at the start of this race. ND Morphy down in 11th and 12th maybe had a bit of a collision as I think it might have been Nathan who went off down at in towards turn one. But it is a good start from Bonneville, who keeps Tiger Assassin behind him. Cameron the boom almost looked like they were going wheel to wheel with Topista from the start of the race. And Toussaint looking racy behind that, the, uh, the other Mustang on the grid. Running in sixth place at the minute and he's, uh, sorry, Piero, gapping uh, Costa and Ted a little bit. As they're going to go almost three wide and towards the final chicane, Costa on the inside of Ted. Uh, can he make this one stick? The Swiss gets ahead of the Irishman and then Nathaniel might try and follow him through. Couldn't quite uh, do anything of it in the Mercedes. And he's starting this race on the, uh, on the soft compound tyre as well as Ted. Costa on the mediums. Uh, meanwhile, there's a bit of racing action going up in front between Tobster and Finn. They're three wide with two state on the inside. Uh, what's going on here? I don't know where this is all kicked off from. But um, it's so hard to see what's going on. Finn on the inside of uh, two state might try and send one on the inside of Cameron Kaboom as well. Going in towards turn one, the Porsche sees them coming on the inside. Tobster now going wheel to wheel with two state and they're two by two, making their way up the hill through turn two. It's so good. We're even on lap two, fighting for third place. Nearly had it. Nearly had the all sets of twos. Two state now on the inside of Finn makes a little bit of contact with the German, allows the other German, a Tobster, to slip back through on the inside, becomes the outside for turn four. And uh, with the old switcheroo, Tobster now gets the position back up into fifth place, going wheel to wheel with Finn in the Ford Mustang. Uh, the Mercedes trying to go round the outside, Finn leaving him just enough room for the inside of turn uh, six or seven. But it is Tobster who gets the move down up into Ward's fifth place. And look at Piero in the McLaren trying to get racy behind the Mustang. Is he going to send a move down in towards the hairpin? Not on this occasion. But brilliant racing from the first two laps of this race. And we've still got 28 left to go. Bon Evil extending his advantage to Tiger Assassin. 1.8 seconds now separates the two British drivers. It's a Brit 1, 2, 3, 4 in the early phases of this race. Tops has dropped down to fifth place and two Saints promoted himself up into fourth. I'm not sure if there was any contact. We can't get a replay feature, unfortunately, because that's not in this game. Finn trying to send one back down the inside of uh, Tobster, but he keeps the position. Um, have I spoken too soon? Because the two Germans are going at it for fifth place, and it's cost Tobster quite a lot of time. He's now 1.4 seconds behind T Saint, your season one champion, and well, against the season. What am I trying to say? Finn up the inside of Tobster. I'm not too sure. It's it's late at night, and it's Friday. Why do I do this on Fridays? But Finn with a good move in towards the final chicane now gets back up into fifth place and ahead of Tobster, bringing Piero, Costa, Nathaniel, Ted, Wolfie with him. The whole pack now on the start finish straight. This is the close racing we want to see when Play Dutchie is in the lobby. Old oh, Fears will no Cameron Kaboom onto the grass, might have hit the back of uh, Tiger Assassin going in towards turn one. That unsettled the Porsche going uh, in the braking zone, and Tiger might lose the position to his teammate. The two Mercedes going side by side through turn two. Two Saint running a little bit wide onto the Astra turf, but they are still door to door, making their way through the first sector of the Nurburgring. And Cameron Kaboom's not lost another position to Finn uh, from the mistake at turn one. He put a wheel onto the grass. Uh, causing the back end to step out and then that lost uh, lost all the braking grip and um, unfortunately hit the back of Tiger Assassin and he's gone wide in towards turn five onto the grass hopefully he can rejoin the track safely 
does indeed so, but he's going wheel to wheel with Pierre and look at Nathaniel trying to get involved in this battle as well. Tobster and Finger, sorry, uh, Costa going wheel to wheel. It's difficult when two drivers have the same livery in there next to each other on the track. Tigress Asmo gets back up ahead of two Satanist teammates into second place, but all this squabbling, they're costing themselves so much time as Nathaniel now finds himself up into seventh place ahead of Piero and Cameron Kaboom. 10 and Wolfie looking racy uh, behind in 10th and 11th respectively. But what action we've had. I said at the start there would be action. And we certainly have got action at the start of this race. What a way to kickstart the season off as uh, Costa is trying to follow Topster through the third sector. He's in the slipstream of the Mercedes. Is he going to go for a move into the chicane? We ride on board before uh, getting back up into the cinematic cam. He's not close enough to go for a move in towards final chicane of Cameron Kaboom smelling the back of the McLaren and uh, nearly shunting him off the track down and towards the, the final chicane pretty fine margins in this race I'm going to have to stop to take a drink in a minute uh, unfortunately I didn't refill let's head back up to the battle for second place uh, two Saint doesn't attempt one on his teammate Costa though tries one on Tobster towards the inside down towards turn one gets the move down up in towards fifth place but Piero with the old switcheroo as Cameron Kaboom breaks too late going in towards turn one two cents got back past his te teammate uh, so maybe a mistake from Tiger on the exit of turn one uh, I didn't quite see that as I was looking back towards the battle between Nath uh, Nathaniel is losing positions to Cameron Kaboom and Piero uh, sorry they got Cameron Kaboom and Nathaniel there's contact between the two the Mercedes hit the side of the Porsche down in towards turn three there might be a Stewart's inquiry into that one but the Mercedes holds eighth place for now maybe a little bit of desperation getting into the, a few of these drivers heads at the opening laps of this race um, I think Ted might have gone a little bit deep in towards turn four it's also a little bit of time to his teammates as uh, Cameron Kaboom now follows the back of the Mercedes going in towards the hairpin doesn't send one towards the inside and I think we can breathe for another 30 seconds as uh, Finn is now caught up to the back of the two Mercedes drivers fighting for second and third place hello and welcome to everyone who's tuning into this race you are you are privileged enough to have been to join, in, to join us live for this amazing start to the season. More contact and overtakes between Nathaniel and Kaboom. There might have been a little bit of contact as the Porsche tries to go down the inside of the Mercedes, but it is Nathaniel who comes out on that battle on top. Meanwhile, Tobster and Costa going side by side again, and we're only on lap four, and it is the Swiss who makes his way ahead of the German. see Tiger Assassin suffering from a little bit more tyre wear than his teammate in front. Uh, Toussaint is closing the gap to your race winner and pole sitter Bon Evil. Finn may be tempted to go for a move on the inside in towards turn one. Uh, it's getting a little bit overcast but we know from the conditions and qualifying it's not going to rain in the first 25-ish minutes of this race which doesn't mean it won't rain later on in the session. Uh, Topster still sits behind uh, uh, Tops still sits behind Costa as Cameron Kaboom and Nathaniel continue to go wheel to wheel through the first sector of this of the this this track. I couldn't quite get the words out as the Porsche now ahead of the Mercedes runs a little bit wide though. Has Nathaniel got the drive on the exit of the corner? Yes, he has. He's now alongside Cameron Kaboom up with the inside line. Legs on the brakes. Cameron Kaboom now gets back up into eighth place, and this is a battle that I don't think will die down any time soon and joining the party is Wolfie and Ted Bon Evil's picked up a 5 10th penalty somewhere on this lap that's going to bring uh, two Saint closer to him it's Tiger and Finn go wheel to wheel through the Schumacher S's and the German in the Mustang gets the move down up into third place and on to the podium on lap 5 of 29 Tiger Assassin had demoted to fourth place. If you ride on board with the Mercedes, got a good run through turn, I want to say 12, through 13. They go, he's in the slipstream, he's gaining all the time, he's gaining, he's gaining, he's gaining. Finn goes slightly defensive towards the inside, cuts back over to the racing line and maintains third position. But he's gone a little bit deep over the curb on the exit. Is that going to give him a 5 tenth penalty? 
I think he might have got away with one there. I think he lost a little bit of time to Toussaint, who's caught right up to the back of Bonnie Evil, having had served the 5 10th penalty and sets the fastest lap of the race. So strap yourselves in, ladies and gentlemen. We've got a race for the lead on lap 6 of 29. And here goes Tyra Assassin now to the inside of Finn, late on the brakes, in towards turn 1. Door to door as the Mercedes squeezes out the muster and Finn loses the rear on the exit of the corner. Tops to try to go round the outside of Finn. That could be an ambitious move. He can make it stick. Does have a 5 10th penalty, which he'll need to serve at the next penalty detection gate, which is located in the third sector. We've got a driver into the pits. Not too sure who that is. I'll check it out in a minute as a two Saints still trails Bonnie Eagle by 4 10th, but has closed the gap drastically. And look at the wear on those soft type compound tyres as Nathaniel is in and out of the pits. Finn going defensive to the inside as he tries to defend from Tobs to behind. That's allowed Tiger just to get a little bit of breathing space. Now pulls five and a half tenths clear of the Mustang. Here goes the Mercedes trying to go down the inside of oh, Finn in towards the hairpin, but nothing doing on this lap. Tobs are taking a wider line on the entry. Finn's lost the rear, he's gone into the gravel and he's gonna lose a position and a heap of time to Tobs to who now gets his way up into fourth place but does have a 5 10 penalty so Finn might see himself back through at the end of this straight when Tobster serves that time penalty assuming it's for track limits I mean that's the only way you can get a 5 10 penalty uh, the gaps have started to open up a little bit between the drivers towards the back we've got the three Irishmen separated by about two and a half seconds between them all ND trying to close on to the back of Wolfie uh, meanwhile, Finn and Costa running fourth and fifth as Thompson now gets demoted down to sixth place, having served the five tenth penalty and runs 5.7 seconds off your race leader. 5.6, 5.5. Maybe Bonnie Evil's made a mistake. The Genesis looking a little bit out of shape as they make their way through the final corner. Is this going to be two Saints' chance to take the lead of the race? Here in the Nurburgring, he doesn't look like he's close enough to go for a lunge on the inside, but we've seen it being sent from a further distance in the past. And with all the squabbling that happened on the last lap, Tiger Assassin's now got some breathing space behind him. 1.5 seconds. He's got three seconds to close down to his teammates. And his tyre wear on the front, so just looking a little bit more worn um, than Toussaint. Uh, tyre wear, though, is looking fairly even throughout the grid. Piero, though, probably with the best. As uh, we now watch Tobster trying to close down the two. FGR teammates in front of him. Whether we see team orders between these two or not, we'll just have to wait and see. The two Mustangs teaming up this season, Finn and Costa, uh, running in a solid fourth and fifth place. There's two saying nearly pushing Bon Evil through the, uh, through the second sector. The Mercedes all over the back of the Genesis. This is the view that Bon Evil has from behind. You can see the Mercedes, the grill, ready to, to cook up a move for the lead. I was trying to make a, a cooking reference with the grill, but never mind. Um, bon Evil, though, purple through the first sector, responding to the pressure that Two Saints putting on behind. Two tenths, less than two tenths. Now a tenth if they make their way through the final sector. Two Saints late on the brakes, down the inside, in towards the final chicane. Goes a little bit deep, but keeps it within the track limits and takes the lead of the race on lap 27 of 29, rounding the final corner. One Brit ahead of another. But will Bon Evil have a better chance of an overtake with the slipstream down and towards turn one? I have absolutely no idea how long the straight is because I didn't get the GT7 facts and statistics when making the lobby. And to be honest, I didn't actually make the lobby so I couldn't get the statistics for you. But Bon Evil really putting Tuesday on under pressure, taking a different line actually to, um, to the driver in front going through the first corner. It looks like it took, took a bit more, quite tighter on the inside. Uh, to say the pits were taking a wider line through the first corner. Thompson drifting his way through turn two, on the exit of turn two. Maybe the medium tyres starting to lose a little bit of performance. Having said that, though, lap times are still fairly close and competitive. For those wondering about the music in the background, don't worry, it is non copyrighted music from the game itself. There's a broadcast setting that you can turn on. I thought it'd be nice to have a little bit of music in the background during these races. Just if I'm quiet, going for a drink or something, it's not dead silent. But if you want me to get rid of it for the future streams, if it does become annoying, 
I will get rid of it, but I think it's kind of nice having the little... <clears throat> anyway, back to the racing action. We've got a three-way fight for fourth place between Finn Costa and Hobster, running in fourth, fifth and sixth. Uh, two seconds starting to pull out an advantage to Von Evil. The gap now five, six tenths of a second. Having said that though, the gap has come back down to four tenths, making their way through uh, the uh, the left right kind of sequence of corners, turns 11 and 12 here at the Nairbeck Ring. But have we got any other overtakes happening on the grid? It looks like Ted's just coming for a fresh set of the medium compound of tyres. He's on his hour laps, so he would have just pulled into the pits and has put in a full tank of fuel uh, in the Supra. Uh, Piero is actually gaining on the drivers in front of him. It looks like the gaps are actually coming down between the field. It looks like the field's coming a lot more closer together as uh, Toussaint leads the field by three tenths of a second and that was close between Bon Evil almost rear-ending the back of the Mercedes. I thought that Genesis uh, was going to pay a trip into the boot of Mercedes but thankfully it did not. Uh, but you can see Finn skating on Tiger and he's bringing Costa with him. Tops is just dropping off the back of the two Mustangs and that's bringing Piero now back into the fight. He's only seven seconds behind the race leader. Uh, Cameron Kaboom after the mistake early on down towards turn one and subsequent, uh, subsequently the rest of the lap with dirty tyres. He's only three seconds behind Piero so the grid is still fairly closely compact to each other. And we've still got plenty of racing laps to go. Lap 9 of 29 for those watching live on Twitch. Let me know in the chat who you think is going to win this race. Any shock? Um, any out of the blue? What's, what's the phrase then? No, it is shock. Yeah, any shock predictions? Anything? Let me know what you think in the comments. Uh, I feel like something changed from the leaderboard, but I'm not too sure. Something definitely flashed. Um, but anyway we are almost approaching the end of the quality mark we're 17 minutes into this race and um well after 20 we don't know what the weather will be like because uh, the weather in the practice lobby is the same for the race um, so we know it's at least dry and nathaniel has disconnected our first retiree from this race we're now down to 11 drivers oh and that promotes me to on the grid which means we've got a wait actually no, never mind i'll just keep the game features to itself. I need a drink because my throat is honestly about to explode as uh, Piero has actually got ahead of Tops, they're both with 5 tenth penalties. I will be back in 3 seconds as I just take a quick break. Apologies about the other day, the delay. Apologies as well about the lack of English. Um, I did see a, a, a comment. I think it was someone um, saying one of the um, FGI guys, FGI, FGR drivers would win the race. That is Finn or Costa. One of them has actually just set the fastest first sector on lap 10 on those worn medium tyres and is within the slipstream range of Tiger Assassin in front. Two Saints pulled out a 1.1 second advantage to Bon Evil in second place, but Tiger now finds himself under pressure from Finn Costa and, um, well, Piero and Tops are just going to drop off with their 5 10 penalties. Tops has gone a little bit deep in towards the hairpin, almost going into the gravel, and he's costing himself time to Piero, but uh, Finn and Tiger now the battle on track for third place. I wonder what the weather has on offer for us today because uh, it did rain last time we went to the Nürburgring and it can rain at the Nürburgring so I'm not saying it will rain but it would be nice if it did even if it's just a little shower to change the mood essentially um, but 20 minutes in another 40 to go I'm lucky not lucky what's the word I think I'm grateful and thankfully my internet hasn't actually died yet which is perfect Exactly what we want to see. Exactly something else we want to see is the battle for third place, the final step 
on the podium. Cameron Kaboom and Thompson pull it into the pits off the medium compound of tyres as uh, Tiger having to defend into a turn one from Finn and Costa. Two Mustangs looming large in his rear view mirror. You can just, see, just about see them over the rear wing. As this is our closest battle on track as things stand. Hello and welcome to everyone who is watching us live and also everyone to, uh, who's watching um, back on YouTube or even back on Twitch. I hope you guys are having a fantastic day or have had a fantastic day. Um, actually, I should have said that at the start. Good morning, good evening, uh, good afternoon, good night from wherever you're watching this in the world. How are you guys doing? I didn't actually do that at the start. I was too busy to talk about my internet issues at the start of the stream. Apologies, but I um, hope you guys are enjoying. Anyway, back to the, the back to the racing action because that's what you guys are here to see. You want to see these guys wheel to wheel on the circuit, up into the barrier, on fire, upside down because that's what you want to see. You're here for the crashes. You're waiting for the highlights of all the, the top ten crashes of the season to be uploaded to YouTube. That's what that's what you're doing. I can see you. I see your viewers just skipping forward, looking for the yellow flags and the safety cars. There are no safety cars in this race, but look at the wind. Look at the weather. Look at the wind. The wind's picking up. The last time it done this, it rained. It, it rained the last time the wind kicked up this heavy. I'm getting my hopes up now because we're at 9 metres per second in terms of wind. This could make for an interesting second half of the race if it is to rain. Do you, everyone do your rain dances in the chat or whatever, however you're watching this. If you're at work, stop working. Do the, do the rain dance. Sing the little rain song because we want it to rain. Drivers are about to or could be putting off the medium compound tyres in the next few laps and it is getting quite overcast and there is no chance of rain unfortunately we can't actually get access to the weather radar in the commentary box um, only the drivers have access to that but look at Finn putting Tiger under pressure through turn three is he going to go for it Tiger's going a little bit wide oh please connection I think it's dying and apologies about the connection issues but we are back and uh, for those of you who are watching this is actually post commentary because my mic disconnected during this moment in the race and I didn't realize so there is no of my audio so I'm rehab I'm having to redo this as part of the stream but anyway it doesn't matter I know what's happening but I'm not in control of any of the camera angle so this can make for an interesting um, an interesting bit of commentary because you wouldn't have heard this bit before because I'm doing this after the race. So this is not live. This is the first bit of non-live but live action that we've had on in the GT7 League. So we are on lap something of something. I've just joined the lobby at this point, so I don't know what lap we're on. Endy's not actually winning. It is Costa, but we'll get onto that in a minute. Drivers have just made their pit stops. For those of you who aren't aware, two Saint box for a set of the soft compound tyres. We had the two drivers out in front the two FGR guys on a set of medium compound tyres they put in less fuel than the likes of Tiger Assassin who's now down into about seventh or eighth position because he put in more fuel after the first pit stop this stop or this race is probably going to be a two stop looking at it and just a disclaimer I'm going to do commentary as if it is live just so it feels live because I know what happens but I don't know what's going to happen immediately so bear in mind with that and the camera angles that you are seeing anyway we've got a nice battle on our hands for fourth place between bon evil and piero the frenchman looking to go down the inside of bonnie into turn one he's got a little bit deep that's going to allow piero in the mclaren to slip one up the inside what am i doing get back into the lobby come on fool what are you doing man why am I looking at the lobby? Get back to spectate. There we go. There's a battle between Bonnie and Pierre. I'm not sure who's coming out on top because I'm messing around with the settings. Come on. Looks like it's um, Bonnie with the head of Piero. And um, the two FDR teammates fighting for the lead. But look at that. Bonnie Evil defending to the inside from Piero. Going through turn six. In towards turn seven now. The Brit still ahead of the Frenchman. The McLaren trying to hunt down the Genesis on those fresh sets of medium compound tyres which should take him to about lap 21 or so if he's to pit for another set of softs at the end of the race. Remember in the tyre compound rules, you've got to use two different sets and I think only two Saint at this rate, um, stage of the race has used two different tyre compounds. Tiger Assassin looking to try and close up the gap to Piero a little bit just so he can 
find himself in the action as Pierre is going to look for a move on the inside of Bonnie Evil down in towards turn number 11. A little bit of contact between the McLaren and the Genesis as they make their way through turn 12. Bonnie Evil with a nice tight inside line but Pierre haven't gone wide. We will get a good run up the hill in towards turn 14. Through turn 13 they go now. Side by side. Tiger looking hungry in the background trying to find a room on the right hand side of the circuit. Left hand side of the screen which will become the outside. Pierre swoops around the outside of Bonnie Evil and Tiger Assassin might try and follow him through on the inside for the second half of the chicane now. Wheel to wheel, door to door. Through through the final corner the Mercedes tries to hold it down the inside as the other Mercedes of Topster gets involved in this battle as well. We look to see the battle up front it hasn't changed. Costa still leads his teammate Finn in the battle for the lead of the race. Topster gets ahead of Bonnie Evil, slots in between the Mercedes and the Genesis and might try and look for a move down in towards turn one. Defending from Bonnie Evil turns into an attack on Tiger Assassin as on lap 16 of 29 he makes his way up in towards sixth place and now puts himself ahead of the two cars behind Bon Evil running a little bit wide actually onto the Astra turf almost gets hit uh, so actually Tiger almost gets almost hits the back of Tobster as they make their way through the first sector to Saint oh uh, what's that gap I can't see because the screen's so small when watching this back um, but um, <laughs> I think it's about five seconds between two Saint and the race leaders but all everyone still has to make another pit stop, bearing in mind the top two have to put in more fuel than everyone else on the grid. If that's the equivalent of five seconds or less, and they'll rejoin in the lead of the race. As Finn actually gets back past ahead of his teammate Costa, he is now leading this race by about a second or so to his teammate. Four seconds of the gap between Toussaint and Costa, the battle for second and third place. We go back down to the battle for sixth. Uh, well, Thomas is running in sixth place, trying to defend from Tiger and Bonnie behind. It's not going to be an easy job defending from two quick drivers on a fresh set of the medium compound tyres. But, um... but yeah, we've got a nice train forming behind Cameron Kaboom, running in fourth place. He's got Piero just behind him as Bonnie Evil goes over the second half of the chicane that might be a 5 tenth penalty we'll check back in a minute as two saint crosses the line sets a new personal best but is he gaining on the top two uh finn costa separated by seven tenths of a second as they make their way through the first corner with two saint in hot pursuit on a fresh set of the soft compound ties but does have more fuel in the mercedes and i think the fuel well the fuel actually makes quite a bit of a difference between a full tank half tank and no fuel in the car in terms of your lap time so they're probably about evenly matched between the top three drivers as things stand in the race uh, we haven't really talked much about wolfie ted and nd currently running in ninth tenth and eleventh place but still picking up some good points for themselves individually as they look at the gap between two set and the leaders four seconds you'd think it'd be coming down by a little bit more on the tyres but like i just mentioned it probably is the fuel load that's holding two set back from closing down that advantage out in front as he makes his way through the hairpin for the 17th time this race as Cameron Kaboom's picked up a one second time penalty in the first sector of the lap meaning he's going to have to serve it as Piero looks to send one down the inside the pink McLaren coming out of nowhere through the hairpin as they make their way up the hill through the Schumacher uh, Cameron Kaboom trying to keep Piero behind him for as long as possible before serving the second penalty which may even see him drop down behind Topster and Tiger Assassin as Tiger now goes for a move on the inside of his fellow Mercedes driver and gets up into sixth position Topster unable to fight back on the exit of the corner but these guys might be able to gain a few extra positions as Tiger sets a new personal best through the third sector there's a slow camera to Kavum after serving a one second time penalty goes through the middle of the track pulls over to the right hand side of the circuit and Tops is onto the grass and he's hit the side of the Porsche now was that camera and Kaboom moving late under uh, while serving his penalty going at a reduced speed to try and block Topster from going round the outside or did Topster um, or was the gap too small on the right for Topster to go round the outside uh, forcing him to go onto the grass and hit the side of the Porsche I'm not too sure of the camera angle 
wasn't great on that one. I couldn't quite see, so I'm not going to throw the blame or say anything I don't want to say, but thankfully they've gone away with no damage. Cameron's going to look to go back up the inside of Tops. The Bonnie Evil sending one late on the brakes on the inside of Cameron. Kaboom, there's contact between the two. Cameron gets forced wide and off the track and ultimately loses two positions. Will Bonnie Evil have to give that position back? It doesn't look like he's going to sink down as Cameron Kaboom might try and refer to return the favour and send one back on the inside of the Genesis. Unfortunately, couldn't quite make anything of it in that move, almost pushing the Japanese car through the first sector. Topsy can kind of put a little bit of gravel as he makes his way through the first sector. Cameron Cabru now going wheel to wheel with the Mercedes as Topsy to the inside at turn seven, gets the move done up into seventh place, and Cameron Cabru loses two positions again in the space of a couple of corners but he's going wheel to wheel with Topster into the hairpin on the inside can he secure seventh place and get the move done yes he can Topster just runs a little bit wide maybe to cut inside and get a good exit up the hill and towards the Schumacher S's will he try sending one down the inside into turn 11 as they go through nine and ten now the left and the right kink up the hill through the second sector they go looking back up to the top runners Costa still trading his teammate by about six tenths of a second and two saints still keeping up with the same pace as Bonnie Evil now leads this mini train of Cameron Kaboom and Hobbs to the battle for sixth place and it's a three-way fight between the Japanese and two German manufacturers two British and one German driver but who will come out on top in this battle we'll just have to wait and see we've got plenty of racing laps here to come at the Nürburgring GP I was about to say one more pit stop due from these drivers at least and that is Tobster into the lane lap number 18 of 29 he may go for another set of medium tyres and for a set of softs later on in the race we might try and take a set of the white striped hard compound tyres to the end uh, looking back up at the battle between Finn and Costa, the gap about eight tenths of a second as Finn still leading his uh, Swiss teammate going purple through the first sector. So got improving on a worn set of mediums, two tenths, four tenths off his personal best. Uh, the fuel load really making such a difference it seems. Maybe Finn being on those mediums found himself in quite a rhythm, got used to uh, the medium compound attire. Tiger Assassin now in fifth place. We've got Bon Evil and Cameron Kaboom going wheel to wheel once again on the circuit. Bon Evil is able to maintain ahead of the Porsche, making their way through the first sector for the 19th time this race. Cameron Kaboom is still stuck behind the Genesis, but can he try and invent a move in towards the hairpin as Bon Evil gets a little bit out of shape on the exit of turn six? It's can. Cameron Gaboom tries to when he's late on the brakes. He's gone wide. He's on the gravel and he's gone round. 360 spin for the Brit at uh, turn number eight. Down at the uh, the hairpin, the Dunlop hairpin, I think it is. I think it's the Dunlop something, but I can't remember what the something is. And that's lost Cameron a heap of time. Eight seconds now behind Bon Evil. That's brought him closer to Tobster when he needs to pit. And not the first mistake he's made this race, unfortunately for him. From the mistake down at turn one. And now a mistake at the hairpin, a little bit too ambitious on the brakes. Maybe just lost a little bit of focus, trying to get past Bon Evil and uh, unfortunately end up in the gravel. Costa's into the pits and Finn stays out interestingly. So split decisions down at FGR and uh, Toussaint will inherit P2. Piero going down the start finish straight now. He's going to come out in third place, I think, ahead of the Swiss driver. What about Tiger Assassin? And Bon Evil, where are they going to come out? They're going to come out ahead of um, the Mustang, but they all need to make another pit stop. Whereas here, Costa's putting in more fuel, and this is where the different strategies come into play. This is only round one. We don't know what the fastest strategy is as of yet. Looks like it's a medium, medium, soft. That's what Costa's been doing. Looks like Tuesday might try and stretch it to a soft, uh, medium, soft, soft. But do you put all the fuel in on the first stint to get you to the end of the race, or do you not put as much fuel in at the end of the first stint and when you come in for your second pit stop is that when you put in your fuel what do you do do you put more fuel in and go slower on a slower tire for a splash and dash sprint finish at the end or do you kind of compromise it a little bit go for less fuel in a faster car on a slower tire um with more fuel and a faster tire though at the end of the race we don't know we don't know what the fastest strategy is i guess whoever wins this race and whoever wins the championship at the end of the 12 weeks and 11 races we've got lined up i guess they would have been the one who've nailed the strategies and um well would have been the, the quickest 
ultimately the cons- most consistent out on the circuit. A reminder, to Saint won a championship without winning a race. That's how consistent he was in the first season of GT Sport at this very track. Finn, though, stayed up for the extra lap, and he's going to continue going for another one. I, I, I think he should have pit because the undercut is really powerful on this game, and especially at such a technical track like the Nurburgring. Yes, it's not the most technical out there, but it's definitely up there with technical circuits. It's not like Monza or Austria. Finn could be losing a lot of time, but having said that, he's not going to need to put in as much fuel at the end of the race. He's going to put on lap 22, only going to need to put in seven laps to take him to the end. Pierre is into the pits from fourth place, drops him down into fifth and possibly, probably even sixth behind Costa. Uh, as we uh, watch Finn stay out for another lap, on those medium tyres, who say on the worn softs, kind of matching him on performance. As you can see, Piero into the pits. He's come out behind Cameron Kaboom, I think. As uh, Bon Evil makes his way through turn one, turn two in fourth place, eight odd seconds behind. Tiger Assassin runs a little bit wide onto the Astro Turf on the exit of turn two. But this could be a really interesting end to the race between Toussaint and Finn. The front, the top two in this race. Uh, I, I, don't, I honestly don't know who's going to win this. Is the fuel deficit and um, the strategy going to aid Finn? Because he's going to have to put in fuel. Has he got the margin ahead of Toussaint? He might have actually ran wide uh, through the hairpin. I saw some tyre marks. but I think those were tyre marks from uh, a previous driver running wide. But this could be a really interesting uh, final stint and I would expect the uh, the pit window to be open now or would have been open for the past uh, lap or two as uh, Bonnie was actually going in, uh, going blue through the, uh, the the second sector on those worn tyres so it is improving despite the tyre wear uh, has been quite a quiet race though from the, the back three um, Wolfie leading ND ahead of Ted these could be one to watch towards the end of the race uh, Wolfie pitting for a fresh set of tyres. Maybe one of them might try and go for the fastest lap of the race towards the end. Uh, meanwhile, we've got your two race leaders, Finn and Hussein, into the pit lane on lap. At the end of lap 21 on lap 23, it's mediums and 42 litres of fuel versus... Sorry, it's softs and 42 litres of fuel against mediums and eight laps of fuel. Eight litres of fuel. Tiger's also into the pits following his teammate in uh, from a set of the worn medium tyres. Obviously, Finn pulls into the lane first, being 5.8 seconds ahead of Toussaint. But can he get 5.8 seconds of fuel in the car to take him to the end of the race? We'll have to wait and see. Two seconds changing tyres. He's um, already out. No refueling needed for the BCMR driver. And he is out ahead of Costa, ahead of Finn, and into the lead of the German Grand Prix. The Nürburgring GP GP. The, uh, the like you know the the la Ferrari, the, the Ferrari la Ferrari the Nurburgring GP GP and two Saints gets promoted to the lead of the race after the pit stops he's nailed this middle stint that middle stint was crucial for him to keep up with the front runners because he didn't need to put in any fuel he put in all the fuel at the end of the first stint meanwhile Finn and Costa had to put in the fuel at the end of the second stint so they were longer in the pit stops they are now the hunters Toussaint is now the hunted it's going to be a showdown finish for the end of the race meanwhile Tyke Assassin out ahead of Bon Evil and Tovster those two could gain on the back of the British driver in the Mercedes and we could have a nice three-way fight for sixth place towards the end of this race Tobs are running a little bit wide onto the gravel through the exit of turn seven that's not going to help him in his fight for uh, the, uh, the, uh, blah, 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 for sixth place as the body evil starts to pull away a little bit. Camera Kaboom will be into the pits at the end of this lap. His fuel light is flashing red, and uh, Finn Costa on fresh sets of softs against Toussaint, also on a fresh set of softs. Three drivers fighting for the lead of the race, separated by about three, two seconds out in front. Finn four seconds behind the race leader. Can he close down that time in the final seven, eight laps of this race? As Toussaint makes his way round the final corner and starts lap 23 in the lead of the race. Started down in the sixth place, I think it was, as Cameron Kaboom pulls into the pit from the medium tyres and will probably put on a set of the soft red strut tyre to go to the end of 
this race where will he emerge probably behind Hobbs the ride imagine it has picked up a penalty which will drop him behind this battle for fifth place now that Cameron Kaboom has made his pit stop is Bonnie Evil going to try and send one to the inside he's late on the brakes and there's a lot of contact between Bonnie and the uh, Tiger it might not seem like a huge amount but certainly there was a shunt down in turn one Bonnie Evil late on the brakes hits the rear right tyre of Tiger Assassin it's just about unsettled the Mercedes although he keeps fifth place in the race for now I don't think it's the first time they've come together this race and by the looks of it it might not be the last as it, the, uh, the clouds loom large and surround the track here at the Nürburgring are we going to get any last lap drama uh, drama are we going to get any rain towards the end of this race it rained in the mini season and it caught a lot of drivers out maybe it might catch a few out here today we've got, only got six laps left of this race and if it were to rain what an end of the race it would be drama from start to finish and we've got the two FGR drivers closing down your race leader and your season one champion Bonnie Evil flashing his headlights letting Tiger know that he is behind him and he will go for a move when the opportunity arises he will not give up this battle for fifth place every point counts in this championship fight there are 11 races where points can be scored and the championship could go down to a matter of one or two points where points in every race are crucial even if you're finishing in the bottom half of the field Tiger Assassin though is under pressure from Bonnie Evil we've seen these two wheel to wheel on track um, not only today but in the past as well uh, we know what they can provide Bonnie Evil just going over the curb slightly on the second half of the chicane is he going to get a 5 tenth penalty yes he does for going over the chicane over the curb a little bit too much too aggressively can't argue with that and uh, with that penalty he's probably going to want to get ahead of that Mercedes as quickly as possible he's gaining in the slipstream he pulls over to the inside he's late on the brakes and he swings one down the inside Tiger Assassin's forced to leave the door wide open but look at the grip that the Genesis has on the inside but Tiger allows himself to have the inside line going through turn two which will lead him into turn three this contact between the two once again as Bonnie Evil gets a tank slapper on the Astro turf on the exit of turn two and uh, hits the rear right of the uh, Tiger's Mercedes with his front left no damage thankfully neither of them in a barrier but with a good run through turn four and towards turn three Bonnie Evil has a look at the inside Tiger leaves the door open goes defensive for the next left uh, right hander at turn seven the Mercedes staying ahead of the Genesis but for how much longer Bonnie Evil is looking like he wants to get past ASAP Tigers run wide through the uh, through the hairpin and uh, Bonnie Evil sees an open door on the inside and he goes for it gets the move done on the inside up into fifth place gets a little bit of a wiggle on the exit of the corner just for for measures as well Finn still leading his teammate in the battle for second place as they hunt down your race leader to Saint who started this race in sixth position in a couple of seconds Bonnie Evil is going to have to concede can, uh, can, uh, concede not consume concede the position the tiger assassin as he serves his 5 tenth penalty pulls over to the right hand side of the track and the mercedes goes through and claims fifth position once again two saint finishes lap 24 and starts lap 25 with a comfortable margin to finn three seconds i say comfortable but it's certainly not a walk in the park for him he's got two quick drivers one making their gavel racing debut behind them and little does he know his teammate is also in a monumental battle for sixth place and their constructors high, uh, constructors championship fight or i should say the team's championship because some of them are in the same uh, manufacturer some aren't it doesn't matter there's no rule saying you can't be in different different teams but a constructors championship doesn't really make sense so in the team's championship i guess as uh, the sun begins to uh, fall at the exit of turn two You can see the, the beautiful sunset um, illuminating the sky quite a massive sun if you must say so if I must say so myself but um might put a few of these drivers off as we approach the uh, the late evening in this race we have been racing for 50 minutes plus the 20 minute qualifying session so it has um, has had enough time for the sun to set as we'll be in ninth place is ahead of uh, ND and Ted, your race winner from Monza in the 
uh, one of the, in the European mini season. Uh, just wondering if Wolfie's, if Andy's made a mistake there, because the gap between him and Wolfie was um, going up quite a bit. And uh, oh, Andy also picking up a one tenth penalty. Bonnie Evil though, still looking at the back of that Mercedes, getting used to uh, how it's designed from the rear, looking at those sponsors on the rear of the car and that could be the invite that Bonnie needs to get back up into fifth place I've got the hiccups now as um, Bonnie Evil sorry Tiger Assassin running wide onto the gravel the lack of momentum might force Bonnie Evil to look for a move on the inside nearly makes contact with the Mercedes he goes a little bit deep into the chicane there might have actually been contact between the two cars Bonnie Evil trying to go for a move down the inside of Tiger in towards the final corner they're door to door as they go through the long swooping right hander which leads them onto the start finish straight now Tiger Assassin's got the run he's got the momentum he's in the slipstream of the Genesis in front who kind of well, a white car and a green car and Mercedes versus a Genesis down towards turn one. Who's later on the brakes? Bonnie Evil swoops around the outside of Tiger Assassin. Looks like the Genesis just has more turning, more grip than the Mercedes has for offer. Uh, Tiger maybe suffering a little bit from understeer that the Mercedes is naturally, uh, naturally has as Bonnie Evil runs wide onto the Astro Turf. Completely loses control of the car, manages to save it nicely though, but concedes the position to Tiger and that's the second time in a couple of laps where a mistake or he's been forced to give the position back against his own will essentially but uh, a good save from the Brit to keep it nearly on the circuit just run wide onto the grass and the astral turf and there is no grip off the circuit but uh, still keeps it within a couple of tenths of Tiger Assassin as he now gets back past and almost sees a gap on the inside on the exit of the hairpin but couldn't quite find a move through as they go up the hill in towards the uh, Schumacher races once again for the 26th time this race uh, Tiger kicking stones and grabbing and throwing them into the windscreen of Bonnie Evil as uh, they, he tries to look for a move he's just trying to He's just trying to find the recipe and the right ingredients to make the move stick up into fifth place. Meanwhile, Toussaint still leads this race from Finn and uh, Costa in second and third. Piero in fourth is uh, comfortably ahead of Tiger and Bonnie. And these two guys battling are only going to cost themselves time, maybe even to Tobster, if the gap is close enough. We can just about see Tobster approaching the chicane in the background. Tiger getting a little bit loosey-goosey on the exit of the final chicane and leaves the door open for Bonnie Evil to send one down the inside. Makes contact, nearly forces Tiger over the curb. Just about, just about keep it, keeps it within the track limits. Uh, Bonnie Evil doesn't get the best of uh, exits through the final corner either, but does get ahead and up into fifth place. And has he secured a fifth place finish for now? Is that Genesis working better than the Mercedes on the worn tyres? I think the Mercedes are starting to struggle from the not lack of race pace per se, but as the tyre wear kicks in, the more understeer that Mercedes gets because it's, it's naturally an understeery car. It's not that nat uh, that understeery. It does have good handling, but obviously the more the tyre wear. The more the tyre wears, the more you're going to feel the effects of how the car naturally performs. Such as the Ferrari, the Lamborghini, the Honda. Those are all oversteery cars. And the more the tyre wear, the more oversteer you're likely to receive. But um, we've only got three laps left to go. And I don't think Tiger's got anything left in the tank. So go for it. I think he's used it all defending from Bon Evil. Now Bonnie Evil has the clear air, he can now push and try and get a clearer gap to Tiger. The gap's already about a second. I think he's running out of steam as uh, Toussaint does have his windscreen wipers on. So he was ready for the rain if it were to hit. It was very cloudy at two stages of the race. It started the race quite overcast and it almost finished in overcast conditions. Uh, but the clouds have disappeared and the sun has come out to say hello and... Um, Hello, hello. I don't know what movie is that from, but that's stuck in my head now. That, that that phrase, hello, hello. Someone let me know in the comments section down below. What is that song from? I only remember that bit. Hello, hello. It is a song. It's a real song. I don't know where it's from, but I, I can see it in my head. Anyway, the sun has come out and we've got nice clear sky to finish this race. Tiger Assassin now in sixth place behind Bon Evil. The gap opened up quite a bit already. It doesn't look like he can bring it back here and close down the gap once again Ted though has fitted for actually for a fresh set of soft compound tires and he can't afford 
to uh, go too slowly on his out lap and prepare for the flying lap because he's got two saying on the same straight as him your race leader and if he gets blue flags he's not going to have the chance or the opportunity to complete the fastest lap attempt in order to try and get an extra point in the race but tiger assassin after starting on the front row of the grid finds himself down in sixth place uh, could be under pressure from Tobster if he doesn't keep it clean towards the end of the race so for tiger i think he's just playing it cool he's just trying to bring it home and secure points for the team uh body Eva as well he has pulled a gap to tiger assassin look at that four seconds already but like i was saying i think tiger's just easing off a little bit bringing the car home now that bonnie has some clear air he uh you can afford to use what's left of those soft compound tires and i think the genesis it appears to be working better under the worn um tires but uh to say well he's been pretty dominant in the second half of this stint he's played the strategy almost to perfection but it is not over yet he's still got been three seconds behind him with one lap to go we've seen things change here at the nabeg ring within a lap and we've seen things change before in previous races in one singular lap but two saint will round the final corner to start the final lap of this race ted though will start his fastest lap attempt as he goes in towards turn one we can get a bit of flying lap action from ted mc as he goes a little bit deep through the first corner but hooks it up nicely for turn two hooking it a little, 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 keeping it nice and tight to the inside apex before going wide onto the curve to maximize the amount the i can't speak the most amount of the track available actually went down to first gear for that corner interestingly maybe to try and get the rotation in the car let's have a look at his step to split he's four tenths of his personal best unless he has a normalmighty second third and fourth sector it doesn't look like ted will be stealing the fastest at that point away and i can confirm that the first lap of the race is set by cameron kaboom it is a 154.1 i just had to double check that because obviously i um left halfway through the race meanwhile though to approaches the the, the hairpin for the final time the 29th time for going through that hairpin and well i mean what can we say about the season one champion what is there to say he's absolutely mastered the strategy in this race he he, he got the hit the nail on the head and he's played his cards to perfection it's redemption day essentially for your season one gt sport champion because if we look back to the race in the season one at the nerberg room he was leading this race from nearly start to finish until he pitted thinking he had to use two seconds two uh, different tires tire compounds and he lost that race to duke he finished in second it rained in the mini season after he dominated he was leading that race and he didn't win it after the rain hit on that 14 but he rounds the final corner for the final time and your season one gt sports champion kicks things off here in season one on gt7 with a win here in the nurburgring to saint oto away is your winner here at the nurburgring gp and Finn comes across the line in a really good second place ahead of his teammate Costa for a 2-3 finish for FGR. Piero finishes in fourth place ahead of Bonnie with a really good finish from the top five. Two Saints starting this race in fifth place. Finn started this race in sixth place. Costa started the race in seventh. I think. No, Two Saints started in sixth, I think. How the race of James Bonnie was starting on pole position, finished in fifth place ahead of Tiger Assassin in sixth. Tobster are finishing in seventh place ahead of Cameron Kaboom in eighth. Uh, Wolfie, ND, and Ted will finish in ninth, tenth, and eleventh, respectively. And it doesn't look like Ted unfortunately got that fastest lap point in the end. But an amazing race to kick off the season. And the top three, none of the top three started this race in the top three. All started in the bottom five not the bottom five fifth sixth and seventh sorry uh wolfie though rounding the final few corners nd having a nice quiet race and ted uh actually having another go at the fastest lap of the race seeing as he didn't get lapped in the end he does get another attempt uh, but wolfie in the red green and yellow subaru a race winner from monza in the mini season rounds the final corner and finishes in ninth place the leading irishman on circuit and ND. It's been a clean but quiet race 
from actually no it's been a quiet but clean race there we go that's the better better way to put it from him rounds the final corner and finishes in 10th place and uh, ted not too far behind making the extra pit stop trying to go for the fastest lap uh finishes in 11th place and rounds off the grid nathaniel the only driver unfortunately not finishing but Toussaint kicks off the season exactly how he would have wanted to. It's redemption day for him from the previous two races we've had here at the Nürburgring. He finally stands on the top step of the podium and gains five positions in the race. A really good race and a good performance from himself. Congratulations as well to Bon... Um, not Bon Evil. Sorry, Bon Evil. I didn't mean it like that. To Finn and Costa. But congratulations, Bon Evil, for, for getting pole and Cameron for the fastest lap. But now it's time for a little bit of a new feature, a new thing we've added back from Season 1 GT Sport. That's a throwback. That was two years ago. Let's have a driver interview. And at the point of doing this voiceover, I didn't realise that I actually accidentally didn't say the footage of the interview. I don't know too soon. But basically, what he said, he was happy with this result and he's looking for more wins in the future and he's ready to fight for this championship. Join us next week where we go to Spain oh, for yeah, round number two. I'll see you guys next later. Same time, same place. From me, X90G, it's goodbye. I hope you enjoyed.